Hey guys, today we're talking about no rippers. Um, some of the common things you'll see in certain high rep workouts, uh, high rep pull up workouts like Fran, uh, high rep snatches with the kettlebell, uh, toes to bar, different exercises. We'll find that you know some folks walk away, they've got this big, it looks like the stigmata in their hand, or uh, their calluses are, are torn from their hand and they're bleeding. Um, you know, some people think it's cool. I, I, I can see that to some degree, especially if you're fairly new to the to the style of training that we do in CrossFit. Uh, but the fact is, it's it's really um, not cool. All right, it's uh, something that's gonna uh, it's gonna hurt and it's gonna delay uh, some of your training. When you rip, uh, if you rip serious enough, it's gonna affect your training for potentially a week or more even uh, until that thing heals up again. So some of the things that, that I want to talk about today to prevent rippers from happening uh, is first and foremost. Um, and I'm not really talking about what to do so much uh, if that does happen. Uh, it's a pretty simple thing. You just have to write it out. There's a few things we can talk. Uh, but the big thing I'm going to talk about is things we can do to prevent it. Uh, first up is good hand care. Uh, again, without going into too much detail, uh, it's a pretty simple fix. Uh, we do want to create some layer of toughness to our skin or, or thin calluses. We do want that. It's kind of like your uh, built-in uh, glove that some people wear in a gym, right? Uh, by toughening up the skin a little bit, it's going to help to prevent actually tearing uh, damage to your skin. The problem we have is when we let those calluses continue to build up and thicken, uh, then we get into doing some uh, certain exercises, high rep pull-ups and so forth. That skin gets trapped uh, between the bar and the bones of your hand, all right? And it starts to peel that away and tear. Uh, so first off, uh, I just recommend getting a, a simple uh, tool you can find at the pharmacy or wherever um, that's just used for filing down calluses. Uh, the one side looks kind of like a little cheese grater. File down the big stuff with that, flip it over on the stone side and, and smooth them off. Uh, some people actually use a razor. Uh, if that works for you, that's fine. Uh, the big thing is we just want to take the calluses off. We just want to keep them knocked down a little bit. That's probably one of the most simple ways uh, to, to prevent uh, from getting rippers is just keep those filed down. Uh, you can also use some uh, good hand lotions and things. Uh, 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 coconut oil is an excellent one as well. Things that are going to keep your hands moisturized uh, so they don't start to get dry and crack on you as well. Um, next up uh, is, is when you're actually doing a workout is some chalk etiquette, right? Um, chalk can be helpful certainly to get a better grip on the bar if your hands are sweaty or anything of that sort or if the bar is kind of slick, it's going to help give you some better grip. The problem is when you overdo it with the chalk. Um, we think that's going to give us better grip, but um, sometimes that's compensating for poor grip strength. If that's you, then we need to address your grip strength. Uh, because the fact is, you just want enough chalk to give you good contact with the bar. When your, your chalk, when the bar starts to look white instead of black or gray, we have a problem and you're just setting yourself up for a ripper. Uh, that just creates more friction between uh, the bar and your skin. Uh, so as you're moving your hand around the bar in some fashion, it's going to gr grab, grab it more, create more friction and uh, over time it's going to certainly uh, lead to more, uh, more tearing. And, and if it's tearing, it's usually more catastrophic, so to speak when you have that chalk because it tends to pull away even more skin. Um, on that note, I would also mention when you're doing something like uh, pull-ups, especially as you're doing butterfly and kipping pull-ups, uh, look at what you're doing with your grip. Oftentimes we're over flexing at the wrist throughout the movement, uh, especially at the top. And what's happening is you're coming down, your hand is beginning to rotate. We're extending then the wrist and that bar is really moving in a lot of range. And that's when you really get those in the palm of your hand start to tear away. So we want to get in a better hand position and not do this wrist flexion extension so much. Keep it a little bit more neutral, a little tougher on chest to bar pull-ups, but in a standard pull-up uh, toes to bar, it shouldn't really present such an issue for you. Uh, so again, don't go crazy with the chalk, whether you're using kettlebells or barbells or a bar. Um, that'll, that'll save you a lot. Um, next up, I just want to mention is about taping. So, um, you know, if, if it's something that you tend to be a person who tears a little more, uh, maybe you tend to have softer hands in general, uh, you don't want calluses built up. There are certain times when you're doing a high rep pull up workout again or some of these that taping might be prudent for you. Or if you do have a tear, um, a ripper, uh, then taping is going to help prevent that from getting worse and allow you to continue to train. Uh, first up, I would say the way we don't want to tape. I often see this uh, just because folks don't really have an understanding of it. Uh, the way you do not want to tape is where we um, where we just kind of take it around the hand in a fashion like so, right? When you start wrapping around something along those lines, that's going to last you about all of one pull up and then it's just going to start to roll. And when the tape starts to roll, it starts to get tackier, it just grips against the bar and pulls it even more and it's just going to get in the way. Um, I learned a technique uh, when I went through my training with the RKC kettlebell surf. 
uh, that works really well. Uh, it kind of mimics then a gymnastics grip. Uh, so I'll show you how that's done. Uh, it requires three pieces of tape. Uh, it needs to be long enough that it can go from the base of my uh, wrist all the way up around my finger and back down again. So it needs to be at least that long. Uh, some folks like to double up the tape. If you put two pieces back to back, that's going to help um, get rid of the stickiness that can start to, to get rolled. Uh, but if you do it right, I don't have any issues with, uh, with the rolling. And this has lasted me through uh, any kind of a workout with a lot of reps, uh, even the 100 snatch uh, kettlebell test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the palm of my, uh, just to the base of my wrist. I'm going to actually, from there, I'm going to take it up between my ring finger and pinky. That's where I prefer to start. I also want to open up my hand and mash it down. From here, I'm going to take it around behind and let it fold around behind. But when I come back around, I want to open that up again, keep it snug as you can, and flatten it here. So overlaps about half the width of your tape. Again, smash in the palm of your hand so it's not gapping there, and just uh, stick it to the wrist. Mine's a little long. I'll show you how to fix that in just a minute. So that's your first piece I like to start with. Uh, next up, I'm going to take my second strip. I'm going to start at about the same point, once again, in the base of my wrist. This time I'm going to go up, and I'm going to go between my ring finger and middle finger. Again, I'm overlapping about half the distance of the tape, roughly. Make sure there's no tape exposed and won't worry, uh, won't have any issues with it uh, rolling or getting tacky on you. I think I'm going to wrap around that finger, middle finger, right? I'm going to bring it back around. Again, make sure it flattens out. Again, about half the distance of your other piece of tape and we're good, right? Smash it down. And this tape I have right here is not even that sticky, but it works really well for this. I've used this tape, no problem. So what I'll do is I have a third strip. I can move that piece out of the way. I'm gonna take my third strip of tape and uh, basically just make a wrist uh, wrap out of it. If you're doing thrusters, you're doing something uh, overhead, you need a wrist wrap, just snug it down, use it for that. Or I'm just gonna use it in this case as well. The main purpose is just to keep the tape in place, all right? So I'll go ahead and put that around my wrist, smash it down, and uh, I can, you know, even if I need to use a little chalk in there, I can. But if you do this, it's not gonna overlap very easily and start to get tacky. Uh, again, I've used this through lots of high rip workouts with no problem. Again, this is gonna be great for preventing rippers if you tend to be a person who rips a lot, uh, or if you have a ripper, this is a great way to protect your hands as well. Um, so there you go, how to uh, hopefully prevent rippers, um, things you can do. Uh, if you do get rippers, my best advice, is a little neosporin on there, especially at night. Uh, get you some second skin. Uh, there's some blister packs are my preferred, um, just Band-Aid aisle at the, at the pharmacy. Uh, just mimics a blister. I'm not a big fan of the new skin or some of the other things uh, that are out there that you have to put on there, uh, like a liquid and it forms, uh, that sub burns like crazy for one usually. Uh, but these, these blister packs, pads work fantastic. You wanna keep it wet, don't let it get dry and cracked. Um, and if, if you have floppy skin, Clip it off, otherwise it's going to snag and be a problem for you. So clean it up, wash it up, cut the excess skin off, little neosporin, put a blister pad on it and ride it out.